you ever feel like you're living in a disenchanted world? There's a lack of meaning, a lack of direction, a lack of higher spirituality and higher purpose. And whatever religious intensity people may still have as a carryover from older times or as part of their nature, they direct towards things that aren't really fully worthy of that intensity. Now, maybe you live in a place where there's still a genuine religiosity, a faith, a authentic belief and community built around prayer and congregation and all of that. But still, as you try to grasp the spirit of the times, isn't there something about it that is just lacking enchantment? Well, it's a fair question. It's one that many people are asking. And here's a book called The New Science of the Enchanted Universe, an Anthropology of Most of Humanity, written by Marshall Salins that I recently read with a student of mine in order to try to get a new perspective on this question. Now, the book itself comes up short. It doesn't really deliver what we're looking for when we are looking for a certain sort of spiritual or religious meaning when we want a re-enchanted life. And why doesn't it? I want to tell you that very quickly. It's a compendium, authoritative in the sense that there's so many examples you can always look to from it and find many, many different accounts of different places. Uh, and it's a world in which the gods are here. Gods are imminent. So there's a god of the camera lens. There's a god of my coffee cup. You know, there's a god of my pencil. And whenever I sharpen my pencil, I have to give thanks to the god of pencil sharpeners, that kind of thing. Now, of course, He's not talking about Western societies because from his point of view, Western societies have been disenchanted, but rather all kinds of other cultures outside of the West and outside of the modern West in particular. So, you know, they go fishing, they have to give thanks to the god of fish. They build a canoe, they have to give thanks to the god of canoes. And this isn't one supreme transcendent god like it is in the case of the biblical monotheisms. Rather, it is a world saturated with imminent gods. And the question is, I mean, there are many different questions you could ask about that and several things that the book says that, you know, are interesting and we could discuss. But one, is that really what we mean when we're trying to find meaning, significance, purpose, the sacred and enchantment in our lives? Do we mean that we want to have this sort of, I don't know, Polynesian way of life or something like that, where, again, in order to play a beautiful song on your musical instrument, you're going to strum your guitar, but you first better give thanks to each and every, not to the muse, okay, everybody knows the role of muse in music, but, you know, to the god of the vibrating string and all of that. I don't know, it seems like that's not quite what people are hungry for and searching for when they want a re-enchanted world. So the same student that I'd been reading that with, he recommended another book at the same time, sort of for other purposes, Certilange, The Intellectual Life, Its Spirit Conditions Methods. And I thought that actually this book gives a different version of an enchanted world, a different version of a redivinization and re uh, meaning imbuel of our lives. And it's not one that brings this plurality of gods into the imminence of our lives. Rather, it's one that's dedicated more here in the Western fashion that Marshall Salins doesn't like to the transcendent truth. It's a life lived in pursuit of higher wisdom. It's a life where you have a pole star, a north star, you have a compass, something that orients everything from the way you spend your days and your nights to the way you treat your body, because after all, the intellectual life is an embodied life. You do have to make sure that you're in good health and strength and cheer and all of those kinds of things. It's a life that is full of significance because it's lived in the quest for the transcendent truth. It's lived in search of higher knowledge, higher wisdom, higher understanding. Now, I'm only about, you know, 80 pages through the book, so I can't give my last analysis of it. But I would say that if you have this meaning crisis, if you're looking for purpose and enchantment, if you feel like there's been some sort of nihilistic abyss cast over our world, the gods have fled and man no longer has a floor beneath his feet. Well, there are many ways to slice and dice the options open to you. But I would say this sort of cultural anthropological return to a world full of imminent gods for every act of human uh, activity, it does deserve your attention. You should think about it. But on the other hand, you know, for myself, maybe speaking here more as somebody who uh, resonates with the transcendent aims of the Western tradition, as opposed to the imminentist character of quote unquote, most of humanity, 
as Salins writes about. Someone who resonates more with the transcendent task, I think you could find meaning in a life dedicated to the search of the higher truth.